Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In this one I'll be painting up or showing you how I paint up my plasma site from the Indomitus box. Um, as you can see I've already undercoated this one in lead belcher. Um, I find that paint doesn't generally sit too well on lead belcher uh, when I spray it on. So the first thing I tend to do is um, just go over the model with some non-oil and just uh, just apply a nice layer of non-oil to the, to the model. I find that the paint adheres uh, a bit better to the model once that's done. It doesn't have to be an overly thick layer. Um, it just allows the paint to stick. I, I find and then we can go over the top of this with, with whatever colors we want afterwards. Um, so yeah, I'll just get this non-oil on uh, and then I'll come back. That coat of now and all we put onto the miniature is dry now. Uh, another nice thing I like about doing that is it really makes all the detail just pop. So you can really start planning what you're potentially going to do, do with the model. Um, what I'm going to do now is just quickly go over uh, the bits that I want um, to be metal or remain metal with a dry brush of Necron compound rather appropriately. So just preparing my brush currently for that and I'm just going to flick the brush delicately backwards and forwards over the bits that I want to remain remain metal that will give it a bit of a bit of a sheen uh, and I'll just do this to all the parts I want to remain metal and I will be back shortly that's the Necron compound highlights done. Just finished dry brushing that over the miniature and just sort of left it for a minute or two to make sure it was dry. As you can see, it's just brought out all the edges, made them a bit shinier. Now you could leave the metal work there if you wanted to. What I'm gonna do is just uh, grab a touch of Stormhost Silver on my brush and just pick out the raised areas sort of here, just to make them pop out just a tad more. It's a bit difficult to see behind the camera. I just pick them out ever so slightly. Already messed up a little bit. Just to make them pop a bit more. So sort of areas that you think the light would catch. Um, on the uppermost edges. And you can even sort of on the leg there. Just here. Sort of ex accentuate that battle damage a bit just by applying touch of storm high silver on that bit and I've got a giant blob of water on my brush there just watch out for that when you're painting just to make that stick out a little bit more so I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the miniature and um, pick out all the bits that I want with storm high silver on them as I said this bit's completely optional and you can save a bit of time by not having to to do it you could reserve this just for your characters just to make them pop a bit a bit more on the battlefield all right guys I'll be back once I finish doing that I finished spot highlighting with the Stormhost Silver. I've just sort of picked out um, sort of areas here to make them stand out a bit more around the, the vents. Uh, again, sort of these battle damaged areas and uh, just bits on the legs and uh, on sort of top of these bobby bits here just to make them stand out a bit more. It didn't take didn't take too long. I think it just makes the metal metal pop if you're willing to put in in the effort, but it's completely optional. As I say, you can reserve that for for characters. Right on my Necrons, uh, we're going to have the faceplate being the new Rune Lord brass color. Sorry, I just had to double check what the name of the color was. So uh, we're now going to paint that in. Now I don't normally put metallics on my wet palette because it. Try and bring that into shot view. Now you can't really notice a difference um, between this and the lead belcher, to be completely honest. It sort of looks, it's just ever so slightly brassier. My um, brush is damp to try and make the metallics flow a bit better, metallic paint flow a bit better. As I was saying, I don't put metallics on my wet palette. I find they go a bit funny. Anyway guys, I'll just finish blocking this in all nice and neat and then I'll be back. And there we go, we've got the Rune Lord brass all coated on now. Just remember to get round the back. Uh, when you're painting yours, try not to get any on your nice finished metal work otherwise. 
the next thing we're going to be doing is shading that with uh, Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss. This is a gloss paint, guys, so you don't want to be using too much and watch out for pooling, otherwise you can get some really shiny bits, as is the nature of gloss. Uh, make sure you shake it well, because um, on this test model I did, I don't think I shook it well enough, and uh, we've got sort of these weird dark patches where I think some of the pigment hadn't mixed in properly um, and it sort of left a weird weird finish on the model so make sure you shake it well and watch out for pooling and um, we'll try and get this miniature looking nice so I've shaken my shaken my paint and I'm just applying a tad to my brush and we're going to start painting that on and what I'm going to be looking out for so I'm not going to be letting it pull anywhere. I'm just sort of gently layering it on, almost sort of painting, painting this on. As you can see, it's already had quite a drastic. Um, oh, we got a bit of pulling going on. Quite a drastic effect. So I'm just going to go around carefully, guys, and concentrate on not allowing this to pull anywhere. And I'll be back once I'm done. That's the cryptic armor shade gloss on, uh, and I think actually, if you watch out for pooling. Uh, that doesn't actually look too bad. It's obviously it gives it a different finish to the rest of the model, which I think looks um, looks quite nice. But anyway, what we're going to do next is we're going to grab our uh, Canoptic Alloy. It's again one of the new paints um, as part of this release, and we're just going to start picking out the um, picking out the very edges. So sort of almost edge highlighting. You just use the side of your brush pick out the edges and we'll do this the whole way around the miniature so I'll be back once that's done guys that's the canoptic alloy highlight done and just sort of put some here to accentuate the battle damage there and highlighted all the way around the mask just add a bit of a bit of shine uh, this next step is going to be optional again I'm just um, I'm back to my stormhost silver uh, and I'm just going to be applying some to the very edges, um, sort of these corners, just at the top of the model, uh, where I think the light would, would catch the most. Um, this is quite fiddly, so I'll possibly do that off camera, uh, but I'll be back once that's done. Oh, that's the spot highlighting done. You can't really tell, to be perfectly honest with you. The Canoptic Alloy is quite a shiny, shiny colour. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, base in some of these cables. So I'm going to paint uh, paint those in black. So I've just thinned down some bad and black in my in my wet palette. I'm going to very gently uh, base these in, being careful not to try and touch any of the metal work we've already already completed. Um, so it'll be that one, and there's another one around the back here. And I think that's actually it for cables on this chap. So I'll just get that done, and then uh, I'll be right back. Right, I've got two thin coats of Abaddon Black on those cables now, so uh, just where um, just where I think that the light will, will hit the cables, I've just got some very thin down Eshin Grey, uh, I believe it's called Eshin Grey, yeah. Um, I've watered that down slightly, and I'm just gonna, gonna try and catch the areas where I think the light might, um, might hit the cable, just make sure that's still in shot and in focus for you guys, so just very delicate line. If you do make a mistake, don't worry, you can always just go and touch it back up again with your with your bone black. So I'm just gonna do that. I don't know if you can yeah you go you can kind of see it on on the shot there. I'm just gonna do that on all the cables where I think the light might hit and then I'll be back to show you guys. Right, that's the Eshin Grey applied. So see I've put a bit on that bit there and a bit there as well. And what I've done is I've got some uh, watered down Dawnstone on my brush now and I'm just going to pick out the very tops where I think the intensity of the light catching the miniature uh, would be the greatest. Again, just be careful not to get any of this paint on all the hard work you've done to your metal work so far. And I possibly left it on my brush for a tad too long, bear with me. more to my brush and come back in here a bit of the dawnstone just touch the tops like that and I'll just do that around the miniature guys where I think the intensity of the light will be the greatest and I'll be back to show you 
Oh, I forgot to mention when I was doing or started doing the Dawnstone that this is again an optional step uh, that you can reserve for your characters if you want to. Um, but I'll just show you. I've sort of put a bit of Dawnstone on the bottom here where I think the light would catch. Um, a bit on the top here, a bit around there, and then uh, on the top here, and just a touch on the top uh, in on that side. Right, I think the next thing to do would be to paint in the white, uh, will, which will be the base for our glowing green areas. Um, there are a few places where we're going to need this, and that will be on this island here. Um, maybe on the very tips of his little proboscis thingy up here. Um, either side, uh, here and here. He's got a little glowing orb on his tail. And then don't also forget to put a bit of white um, on these on these areas here. Um, the Warhammer TV guys have been painting uh, their areas in with uh, Corax white and feel free to do that as that's actually a base paint and it might be easier. I don't actually have any Corax white on me so I'll be using Othuran Grey um, as that's a nice near white colour. Um, and depending on how I'm feeling I might put a bit of white scar on top of that in areas where I want it to be uber shiny or uber glowy. So I've got a bit of thinned down of flowing grain on my uh, on my brush here, and I'm just going to go in and touch in all those all those areas I pointed out earlier, and uh, I will be back once I've done that, guys. Those are my layers of flowing and grey, all um, based in multiple thin coats to make sure that they stayed smooth. Uh, sorry, just bumped the camera. As I say, just these little chaps down here, the tail each side, the eye, and then these front bits. I also noticed that they were what appeared to be cables sort of on the end of this proboscis bit, so I just painted them in black and gave them a few highlights exactly as we did with, with these cables. The next thing is to use the new Tesseract Glow paint from Games Workshop. Now I have um, done a few trial runs with this just to see how it turned out, and I was pleasantly surprised. So um, let's see if that wasn't just fluke, and we can repeat the process. Pretty much what I'm going to do is just go around all these areas I painted white and um, fill them in with uh, some of this Tesseract Glow paint. And uh, I will be right back once that's done, guys. Uh, we're done with the Tesseract Glow paint now, guys, and I actually really do quite enjoy using this stuff. It works a lot better on the smaller orbs. Um, but it didn't work too badly on these these large ones either. I did go a step further. I just wanted to try something out. I did go a step further with it and tried sort of some very basic um, object source lighting to give the impression that these were these were glowing. I don't know if you can sort of see it on the scarabs there. I've sort of just tinted the outside of the orb, sort of ever so slightly green, and sort of here. Um, the, as long as you look after. The application uh, stop it pulling anywhere. You do actually get a fairly decent decent finish. These darker bits here uh, are not a reflection of how the paint sits if you look after it. Unfortunately, I was getting a bit carried away with my object source lighting and accidentally dabbed that. Um, but uh, I might um, go back into into that later and just repaint that with my author and gray and and go over it again. But I'm not going to worry about doing that doing that just yet. Uh, I think it looks alright. In fact, it might even add to sort of the cloudy, maybe sort of organic, well, it's Necron, so it's not organic, but sort of um, fluid nature of whatever funny stuff the plasma site's injecting into um, the, uh, the new Scorpec destroyers. But uh, that is the actual Necron pretty much, uh, pretty much done. This is a very simple scheme meant to be very quick to apply, um, a few punchy colours to make it stand out on the table being the, the green glow. Um, so let's move on to the base now. So first off I'm going to paint um, this structure sort of out of sandstone. Uh, the idea is to make that quite light uh, so hopefully it'll contrast against the, the metal. This is going to be quite a dark metal, I haven't quite decided yet whether it's going to be uh, dark silver or maybe a dark bronze and then we're going to have a, 
sort of ashen base to represent the fact that the Necrons have um, taken over this planet or the tomb world, uh, tomb, sleeping tomb has risen up on this planet and burnt everything to, to ash to take it over. But yeah, I think that's coming across quite nicely. But I'm just going to put some Ushabiti bone onto my brush. Um, might need a few thin coats of this and I'm just going to start applying this to all this masonry work. And then I will be back once that's done guys. That's your shabbity bone down now. It was a couple of thin coats to get that nice and solid. Uh, the next step is to grab your Agrax Earth Shade um, and just start sort of applying that to to the miniature. This should be fairly quick again trying to rule, avoid pooling if at all possible. And uh, the little scarabs, you don't want to be messing up any of the, the hard work you've already done. Uh, I'll be back when that is done guys. That's the Agrax Earth Shade wash on and while I'm waiting for that to dry I've just got my uh, Basilicanum Grey contrast paint. Uh, we're just going to paint over the ironwork underneath the, the sandstone masonry. I've decided to go for a darker, darker metal look rather than bronze. Don't want to sort of pull too much attention away from uh, the miniature itself. So we're just going to paint our Basilicanum Grey. I think it's Basilicanum Grey contrast paint onto onto this uh, ironwork. And I'll be back once that's done. That's the Agrax Earth Shade dry now. Still waiting for the Basilicon and Grey contrast paint to dry uh, a bit, but you can see how that's darkened down the the metal a bit. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab um, Screaming Skull, and we're wanting to dry brush. You might sort of want to use a smaller brush for this, um, and we're just wanting to dry brush over the uh, the masonry to sort of build up a bit of a, a highlight. Just take your time with this. Be gentle. Do a few, a few passes to sort of gradually build up, build up the highlight while retaining the the texture of the masonry work there as well. And I'll be back once I've done with this, guys. With the screaming skull highlight now done, and you can see that that sort of brought the texture back out in the in the masonry work. Now we're going to highlight the the metal work down here, and to do that, we're going to go back to our uh, Necron compound and we'll be dry brushing this again. You possibly want to use the same small dry brush you used to do the masonry work. Just preparing my brush and then uh, this is just going to be exactly the same guys. Just uh, dry brush the... I might slide a bit too much paint on my brush there. Just delicately dry brushing the detail back into this masonry work. Don't brighten up too much. Uh, I'll come back once I've done this guys. That Necron compound highlight is now done. It's actually brightened that metal work up a bit more than I was hoping. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put on uh, another very thin layer of the Basilicanum Grey uh, contrast paint uh, to dull it back down again. And uh, by the nature of contrast paints I'm hoping that our original highlight will show through still. So I will just do that guys, as you can see I'm not putting on as heavily as I did first time around. So I'll just go around the uh, the metalwork with a thin coat of this Basilicon Grey and then I'll be right back. That Basilicon Grey is now dry and it's uh, it's knocked the brightness of that metalwork back quite nicely. I'm quite pleased with how that's looking now and the transparent nature of the contrast paint has allowed our dry brushed highlights to, to still show through. Right, I'm now going to give the base some texture, and to do that, I'm going to use Astro Granite, which is another Games Workshop paints texture paint. I'm going to use a brush for this uh, because there are some fairly delicate places under here where I'm going to have to try and get the um, the texture paint into. Normally, I'd use one of their uh, texture tools. I haven't got mine out at the moment, um, but this is an old brush with. Uh, artificial hairs so I'm not too too worried about it 
uh, if it gets ruined. Um, but yeah, I've got the, the Astro Granite here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this bit up here as well, uh, because I'm hoping it'll make it blend into the, the rest of the base that I'm going for, and it will fill that gap. Right guys, I'll spend a bit of time getting this looking nice, and then I'll be right back. And this is where we are once all that astro granite is on the base. Um, just a quick tip, once you've finished putting your basing material on, whether using sand and PVA glue or a texture paint, I tend to just rub my finger around the side, just to make sure we haven't got any stray bits stuck to the edge, because there is nothing more annoying than um, having an untidy base ruining the finished product of your model. So we should have a nice smooth base edge around there for painting once we've finished dry brushing and um, getting that base how we want it. Right, I'm gonna leave that to dry now. That will uh, possibly take about half an hour uh, because I did put it on quite thick in some spaces to sort of try and hide the gaps um, gluing the model to the base. Uh, right, well I'll be back once that's all dry. Now that our Astro Granite is dry, um, I'm wanting to cool the base down a bit to contrast with the sort of warm uh, masonry work we've got over here. So I've got some Draconoff Nightshade Wash, um, which I'm just going to wash over the Astro Granite quickly. be back once this is done guys. While we're waiting for that Dragon of Nightshade to dry now, um, I just want to say the step is completely optional here, but I've thinned down some Art Coat, which is uh, Games Workshop's gloss, gloss varnish, and I'm just going to apply it over, um, over these orbs, just to give them a bit of a different finish to uh, the rest of the model. Another reason for uh, trialing this is the armor shade gloss is obviously glossy and applying the Tesseract Glow as an OSL to this lens has taken back some of that gloss effect so uh, I'm just trying this to see if that can sort of bring it back in again but I'm applying it over the entire face I have thinned this down quite heavily to try and avoid brush marks. I'll just carry on doing that guys and um, we'll be back when, when this is done. Uh, Dragon of Nightshade is now dry so time to crack out the old dry brush again. Uh, this time we're using Dawnstone. I want to try and give the ground that sort of ashy um, burnt look that I imagine a, a Tomb World would have as the Tomb World reawakens and just destroys all life on the on the planet. So I want to try and make the dry brush uh, quite heavy. Bring bring a lot of that grey back in again. I've taken far too much off my brush. Right, let's see if that's better. You just want to build it up slowly, but I do want to make it quite strong. And um, I'll be back when that's done, guys. And that's it for the Dawnstone dry brush. So you built the grey back up on that base. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to dry brush uh, some more Screaming Skull onto the base. That'd be the same dry brush uh, that we used to highlight the masonry, just to sort of try and um, not make this feel so separate to the rest of the base. Right, I'll just get some screaming skull on my brush. Work that into the bristles. Now I just want this to be very light. I'll do it on the side so you guys can see. Just very light. 
we don't want to get rid of all of that grey. You can see how it's already starting to bring the masonry into the base. I'll just carry on with that and then I'll be back. That's the Screaming Skull dry brush highlight done now. Let's just help blend the the base into the masonry work that's going on here. And that's your Necron pretty much done guys. Um, just got to paint the room. I've chosen to use Eschen Grey for this. Um, so it sort of blends everything in together. So you'll want to try and use a good brush for this. You don't want sort of brush marks in your, in your base room. Um, so it's in your paint. And uh, you might want to do sort of two or three thin coats. Um, tip from I learned from Darren Latham is to start at the back of your model because then if you do get a um, I've hardly got any paint on brush if you do get a, uh, a seam uh, where your painting joins around the base it'll be at the back and hopefully people won't notice it so I will just um, get to painting this base room and we'll be back to have a look at the final model that's the Eschen Grey base room done, and uh, your Necron is done. It's a nice, simple scheme um, that looks decent. It will look fine on the tabletop. Um, I hope that's been helpful in um, providing you guys with an example of how to get your Indomitus Necrons all painted up quick and easy um, and looking all right um, for the tabletop. If you have found this video helpful, I would appreciate if you could give give it a like. Um, and I do plan on doing similar sort of videos for all the other Necron models in the Indomitus box. So if that's something you might be interested in watching, um, please consider subscribing. Um, I'll be posting proper pictures uh, if you want to have a look for reference onto my Instagram. That is Brad Does Warhammer on Instagram. All right, cheers guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.